Okay, so exciting update. We have now uh, done an SOS model version of NMN, NAD, and Betaine. Um, I've been getting that re as a request a lot. Um, I know a lot of uh, members have really liked our recent DMT ayahuasca frequency series. Um, chances are, if you enjoyed that, this is probably going to be a winner for you. Um, this was a really special case, and I want to just kind of explain and describe what it is we have here. Um, so, big job. Um, in order for me to do it the, to the best of the SOS model, it took quite a bit of effort. Um, if you haven't used NMN or NAD or betaine before, or betaine, um, understand that it's a relatively new exotic substance that's for anti-aging. Um, I've been taking the substance myself now for about a year, um, relatively consistently. Uh, I've noticed a huge difference. Probably the way I notice it the most is in things like stamina, uh, like just my physical endurance, um, my performance. The amount of stuff that I have to get done every day seems to grow, and it's important stuff, so I have to be at the top of my game to do it. It's a little bit windy out here. It's not great conditions. I just had to get this out quick. Um, okay, so there's a backstory on how we model frequency emulations. Uh, and although it seems like people often feel like we're successful and we seem to get really quirky results, there's basically some kind of disclaimers here. So um, in the comment section or on you know the platform that you're viewing this video, you'll see a link. If you go to that link, you can read more about what this is and that sort of thing. The basic premise is, can we model some significant characteristic of the molecules so that we may experience potentially some of their effects? There does seem to be hard science for that as a plausible solution, and in fact, it's been employed. But there's challenges in being able to do it properly. So what I've attempted is kind of a fusion of some of the best speculated guesses as to how we could do that. Um, there's a lot of techniques to this. The bottom line is this is a speculation. You know, we seem to get good results often with our frequencies. Um, that's why we have people coming back. Uh, you should view this more of kind of like a meditative entertainment. And if you happen to feel better curiously whenever you're using our stuff, then it's not our fault, it's yours. But I want to just talk about what some of the challenges are. So we know that when we're modeling a substance, uh, one of the ways to do it is to take characteristics that, ex that exist in the very high gigahertz plus, and then we try to bring them ideally into an audible range. Now the trick is, from what I understand and what I'm seeing in the different you know groups that are experimenting with this kind of stuff is that Sometimes when you're working with a substance that has a very high, um, you know, Hertzian frequency equivalency, like a value, it's, it seems to be true in many cases that if you bring it down into a lower part of the spectrum, and say you broadcast as a higher frequency with an electromagnetic RF type device within safe parameters, that you can often elicit some of the effects. But it's also been found that sometimes when you bring this down into the audible range, but you can also get some really remarkable results. So it's too much of a detailed topic to go in here, but one of the challenges is, is that while there's a mechanism known to bring these frequencies down into ranges that can be broadcast by equipments, whether it's in the electromagnetic you know, range, um, if it's just like you know, low ULF, or any you know, spectrum in the ULF um, up to low RF and beyond, um, there hasn't been any definitive way to determine which particular frequency at which particular bandwidth uh, would yield the best results, because they don't all. If you were to take the very high end frequency, scale it all the way down, uh, from what we've seen, you don't get results necessarily from just any particular value in a given bandwidth. There seems to be like this missing X factor. Now what I've done is I've taken what's known, I've applied it here so you have a full set of frequencies that can be used through you know, some of the coil type devices, so silent delivery, oscillating, weak magnetic field, or you can play them audibly. I've tried to make them sound good, you know, they're a bit trippy, like they sound trippy. 
one of the ideas that you put them on, you play them, and you know, we hope there's an effect. Um, but there's a couple of mechanisms that I've discovered that seem to indicate that while that particular mechanism isn't known to, to derive and determine the exact right one, I figured out that since there is record of psychoactive, psychoacoustic processes being able to augment this entrainment, what I did is I went out and I found a number of different psychoactive envelope type uh, processes. So one of which is acid pan sweeping, but with acid pan sweeping, in order to get something that approximates kind of like the energetic envelope of the substance, it means that I have to make a lot of hopefully educated and somewhat intuitive punts as to how should the soundscape move and the soundscape itself should be reflecting the characteristic of the substance. So we seem to have successfully woven these psychoactive envelopes into these soundtracks insofar as them sounding good, having a positive, you know, that people feel generally good when they, they play these things. Um, you know, we did employ uh, aspects of that in the previous DMT and ayahuasca tracks, so if you like those, that's probably part of the reason. But the basic premise is that, and we haven't proven this yet, you know, there's evidence of this, or there's apparent evidence of this in the literature, it seems to be a real thing. But the basic idea is by using a special audio psychoactive envelope, sometimes in combination with an another one, as we introduce multiple layers of, the fre of these frequencies in the audible ranges, that will be able to more powerfully entrain the person. So, and they sound pretty trippy. <clears throat> After this video, uh, I'll include a short segment. You can check it out. Um, I like the idea of being able to at least have some means of introducing, you know, the properties of a substance that would be beneficial to me, even if it's theoretical or potential, and just have the opportunity to experiment with that to see if I can improve you know, my state, you know, can I, can I introduce some kind of coherency or vitality, um, you know, through an emulation of the substance. So make sure that you read all the content. I don't just want to sell product to people. Um, you know, review the content. If you think it's of interest, then you're welcome to, to you know, you know, ask me questions, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, but it, this is a quick job. Uh, I just wanted to get this information out there. I hope it's of interest.